My topic is what's good about autonomous vehicles, but that's really just a way in to thinking about, in addition to what machine learning needs to learn from ethics, which is a lot, what is it that we're learning about ethics from machine learning? Uh, so we're going to do this little exercise uh, in which we are all managers at a car company that's building its first autonomous vehicle, all electric. It's, the car is called the Diva, and we've gotten to, together to figure out what we want this car to be all about. What are the values and benefits it's going to bring as a product? And the very first thing that goes up on the whiteboard, of course, is fewer fatalities. It's going to be safety, fewer accidents. That's that one everybody agrees on right away. And then a bunch of other things, some of which are obvious. We want it to have great range. Uh, a lot of ecological savings, a very comfortable ride, fantastic acceleration, be attractive in how it looks, five seats at least, a lot of trunk room, and be highly affordable and highly profitable. That goes up in five minutes. We spend another 10 minutes. We get 20 of these things on the board. And we're feeling pretty good because that's going to be a great car. But then reality starts to settle in and we realize uh, not all of these are compatible. I mean, if you want great acceleration, you're probably going to have to give up on some of the environmental savings, right? If you want fewer fatalities, you may actually want to go slower as well. So one of the values up on the board is shorter time to your destination. Well, you know, that may, maybe conflicts with, with safety. And um, if you want it to um, be really safe, then uh, it's probably going to be heavy, heavily reinforced and the like, which again is going to affect environmental savings and affordability and the like. And these things don't go together all that well. And the, there are lots of intricate relationships among them. One thing, you adjust it, and now it's out of skew for the other things in it. Um, so these are difficult questions for the management team to, um, to deal with, to settle. Whiteboard part is easy. <laughs> it's making decisions about it. It's really hard. Um, <clears throat> so I think the very first question to ask is, okay, but are these, are these in fact moral or ethical questions? And I think undoubtedly it is. If you're trying to figure out the balance between how many fatalities and how much money you're going to make off the thing, that is pretty clearly a moral question. Also, safety versus comfort, right? I, so I'm going to give you this example is a little exaggerated, okay? But uh, it's not, the point is, is, is right. Um, so these cars are driven by machine learning, of course, I'm literally driven by them, and they're constantly scanning ahead of them to see if what they see, you know, the visual analysis says, oh, there's a person in the road, in which case the braking system goes on, no humans involved, it slams on the brakes. But because these are machine learning systems, it's always a matter of probabilities. Uh, it's how likely is it that it's a human in the road. Um, and we're all going to say, if it's 95% sure, absolutely, slam on the brakes. 50% sure, slam on the brakes. But how sure does the system have to be? Because there is a cost to this. If you make the drive it down uh, so low that it's going to slam on the brakes, if there's a 0.1% chance that it's a human, then there can be potentially a lot of times when it's going to see something that it's going to think, well, I mean, it could be a shadow, but 0 0.1, it could be a human and on go the brakes. And if you're going for maximum safety, you're going to set that threshold really low, which means the car is going to keep on braking and the people in the car are going to keep going forward uh, and it could be really un uncomfortable. Um, and in fact, if everybody agrees, fatalities, cutting down fatalities, that is our number one priority, then maybe you should cap the speed limit at 15 because that's a nice safe you know, but then you lose all of the other benefits. And between the two, between the bouncing back and forth and the limited speed, you're going to be serving safety very well, but nobody's going to buy your car, which means nobody's going to get the benefit of all that safety that you've built in. So we're going to have to say as a management team, look, okay, we're willing to have some fatalities. If only because if we, you know, if we don't, then... 
uh, nobody's going to buy it. Nobody, nobody, including us, will get any benefit from it. Um, and you might notice here as well that there's a bias issue, which bias issues shows up, show up all over the place. Um, so let's say you do decide safety, very high priority. That may well mean that the car is going to cost more than a car that is not as safe, another autonomous vehicle, which means that fewer poor people are going to be buying your car, uh, which means that while you, we, we hope we will see a big decrease in the number of highway fatalities as we go with a uh, all autonomous uh, fleet of cars, um, depending on the decisions that are made, it may be that the percentage of people who still die in traffic accidents in cars, or in AVs, are poor people who can't afford the expensive cars. That is conceivably an issue of bias that we need to be thinking about. So lots and lots of, of complexity in this. And that's actually the first thing that I think machine learning shows us indisputably, um, that moral issues are complex. Now, we've always known that, right? And, but we've, the way of dealing with it generally, at least in the West, is to consult moral frameworks, things like uh, the, the deontological framework that says, morality means adhering to a set of known good principles. Thou shalt not murder. Or the, the, the consequentialists, uh, many of whom are utilitarians, who, who look instead to the consequences of actions to judge how moral they are. The greatest good for the greatest number, or whatever. Very, very simple. I just explained <laughs> two moral frameworks that are usually important in Western philosophy, and basically with a sentence. Obviously, there's much more, but you know, it's, it's pretty, in some ways, pretty simple stuff. The problem is, when you go to apply these very simple frameworks, all of the complexity starts showing up again. So, if, so we all agree, thou, thou shalt not kill. I mean, I hope we all agree on that. But we are still going to have arguments about whether killing includes um, capital punishment, abortion, wars, wars in which we are quite confident there are going to be innocent deaths, that is, deaths of civilians, and on and on and on. Euthanasia, the principle doesn't settle that. We can accept the principle we are still stuck in all the old arguments that are without cease. Frameworks, the moral frameworks are simple. The trying to apply them is complex. So in a sense, the moral frameworks simply push the complexity down out of their realm and into the real world in which there are all of these interesting ideas and complexity. So I think that's, that's the first thing that machine learning, is, our encounter with it, is, is bringing us to realize. In fact, as soon as you call an argument moral about morality, you're pretty much announcing that it's not going to be settled. Because we have no way of, we can, we maybe have, we may be applying different frameworks, in which case we're not going to agree, or we may be applying the same framework and we still can't agree. Um, but that's not necessarily bad because it turns out that many moral issues, in fact, turn out about, turn out to be about values. Uh, we saw that in the case of the, um, of, of the autonomous vehicles, right? Um, and the good thing about moral issues actually devolving into, turning out to be about values is, well, first of all, we expect people to have different values. We don't take it as a moral failing um, that you have different values than I do. I mean, in some cases, and especially in extreme, sure. But in general, oh, we value different things. We can accept that generally. And second of all, we have processes by which we know how to settle disputes about values because they show up all the time in every aspect of our lives, from our families to our zoning boards to our governments to our businesses. When we have a dispute in values, almost always there is a known way of settling it. And often those ways of settling it are very good, uh, but often I, sometimes they're not. There's a lot of power, and that's something, again, we have to watch out for, not only with machine learning, but <laughs> throughout our culture, um, that the ways we have of settling value disputes are not corrupt and don't favor some people simply because of whatever is, you know. Um, nevertheless, it's good news, I think, if moral discussions to turn out to be frequently about values because we generally have ways of settling them. And the third thing that's good about that, I think, 
about these discussions being about values is that it, in a moral discussion, we're generally not willing to accept trade-offs or compromises because if I have to compromise on a fair solution, that makes it unfair. And that's, that's wrong. That can't be right. But it is. When it comes to values, it's much easier to, for us to engage in trade-offs. We do it all the time because we have to, because we share a world, we have to live together. Um, I know this is not what we like to hear about morality, but it is, or moral disputes, which turn out to be about values, but it is. And in fact, one of the things I like about this approach, besides the fact that we can actually settle moral disputes, we know how to talk about them and how to settle them, is that the overall moral question that I think arises from them is not who's right or wrong, uh, it's what sort of world do you want to live in? And I think that's a really fruitful question to raise, a way to think about values questions. Um, so what does machine learning teach us, our encounter with machine learning teach us about uh, ethics and morality? One is that it's complex, and it's not just a little complex, and it's not an accident or sometimes complex. It's almost always really, really complex. The second thing is that a lot of our moral discussions actually should be, could be, or are discussions about values, which has its advantages. Third thing is that our encounter with machine learning requires us to make trade-offs. Because if we're sitting in that room with the whiteboard, we have to come up with something. We can't get everything we want. We have to have reasoned, compassionate, uh, justice-driven conversations and practical conversations about what we're going to put in the car. And, and the last thing is, I think, the most important, which is all of this complexity, complexity and difficulty, it's, it's not be, because of machine learning. Our encounter with machine learning is revealing this. It's, all of that complexity is there is because these are not technical issues. They are human issues. They've always been with us. But now our machines are bringing us to, forcing us to engage with and recognize just how difficult moral discussions, conversations, and arguments are.